Hello and welcome to Traditional Chinese Medicine. My name is Christina Kapothanasis and I am a Chinese medicine doctor and acupuncturist in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. My mission is to help people integrate Chinese medicine into their daily lives to promote health and well-being. So if any of your friends or family are experiencing this symptom, these symptoms, please share these videos with them. Spread the joy. Thank you. I want to first thank you for all of the feedback you noted in the comments section from my last video. And thank you for your patience. I have been working hard. I worked on revamping the website and learned website design from the bottom up. It's very simple right now, but it will grow. And the the domain name has not changed, but I will put the ChineseMedicineInfo.com in the notes section below. I collected all of the input and feedback and questions and suggestions that you left for me and I tried to organize them. From that I have created a new series, a collection of case analyses. And I hope that between this set of series and another set of videos that I'd like to do that incorporate more of the food. It would be possibly cooking with me and my beautiful daughter Emma, which you will hopefully meet. And between those two series, I hope that I can address all of the questions that you would like me to talk about. You know that I like to do my series in a very methodical way, so the new series will be set up like this. I will share the symptoms associated with a particular patient's uh, case. Then I will go through and describe how traditional Chinese medicine explains the symptoms and how they explain how they're all connected together and usually tied to the same root problem. And then I will try to go through their treatment and show you how we went along with the food and the herbs and the acupuncture and how their treatment progressed. And then if possible, I know a lot of you wanted some acupuncture demonstrations, so I'm learning video editing now as well, and I will try to insert some of the acupuncture demonstrations as much as I can. At the end of the video, I'll also share with you how you can have a chance for me to analyze your set of symptoms and have an episode devoted to you. I have one more question for you that I have been debating is, would you like for me to share with you my small research topics? I'm constantly coming up with new theories to explain things and trying new things or researching new things. For example, I'm in the middle of my latest trial with transdermal magnesium, which is topical magnesium lotion, and I'm trying it out on many of my patients and of course always myself and the results that I'm getting along the way. I usually like to present things in a nice tidy package at the end with my conclusions, but you just let me know if you'd like all the rambling in my head and the research and the theories that I'm currently going through because I could do short episodes on all of that too. I've also done the G6PD deficiency research this last, last week, which was very interesting and exciting. So let me know if you'd like me to share those things with you because I'm a lifetime student. Okay, let's get started with our first episode and today's episode will begin with a case of PMS. I'll be right back to show you the symptoms. Okay, so we will go over her symptoms now. She started a female when she was 40 years old and she is blood type O. Her PMS symptoms include headaches around her cycle, moderate level cramping, loose stools, breast tenderness, a 27 day cycle, and three days of bleeding versus spotting, um, averaging three to four full pads per day. And this is much more than what I have discovered over the years is the average amount of blood that a woman can lose every month. The normal bleeding would be four to six pads total, not four to six pads per day, but four to six pads total. I know a lot of people are shocked when they have heavy bleeding and they hear that number. She also has itchiness, experienced itchiness mostly on her lower legs, 
energy level is low, 3 to 5 out of 10. And mild constipation, it's brown and formed, but she goes every other day. Urinary urgency, frequency, and occasional leaking. She has neck pain sometimes on a scale of 1 to 10 up to a 10 out of 10. Melasma, which is the dark pigmentation, usually on the cheeks, but it can be also on other areas of the face, and varicose veins. Her history is that she is a flight attendant, and she's been experiencing these symptoms for at least five years. She works irregular hours, doing long hauls to the mainland, and since we are in Hawaii, the flights usually leave here in the evening, which means she would be up all night in the time when the body is normally sleeping. And she sometimes not only has erratic sleep schedule, but also little sleeps, sometimes as low as five hours. And her eating is erratic on the planes, maybe more like snacking during the flights. So this is what I got on my initial intake. And I have detailed registration forms because I need to draw out as many symptoms as I possibly can from people that help me paint a very pretty picture of explaining all of their symptoms in a nice tidy way, how they tie all together to the same root problem, and then that is a very clear treatment plan moving forward. Let's go through the explanation of these symptoms. All of Chinese medicine is based on the yin yang symbol. Yin is the blood and the fluids, and yang is the heat and the energy in the body. You have seen in previous videos, maybe, that when the body is balanced, the levels of yin and yang are the same in the body, and this is optimal. For her, we are going to use my favorite analogy of a pot with blood and fluids inside, and here is your pilot light, or the fire, or your chi, or your yang, or your energy, the warmth underneath. So hopefully, everybody's pilot light will always be on and will not be extinguished so that we can keep going. But it is the ratio of these two, fluid and energy, or warmth, that make us ill over time. So, she has slowly depleted her blood and fluids in her body though she is still going and functioning and having the same amount of energy and export. This is because she, for one, sleeps at erratic hours and does not replenish her yin at night. When it is ideal to sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., she may be helping people by working in the evenings. And or if she doesn't sleep enough, if she's only sleeping five hours, it will be hard to help replenish the blood and the fluids in the body. If she is not eating the proper foods to help rebuild her blood and fluids and or eating too hot foods that will further deteriorate her levels of blood and fluids, then she will get to this dry blood deficiency level even faster. First comes the dryness and then as the illness progresses, then it dips into the blood deficiency. So her dryness possibly already start dipping into the heat, but dryness alone can be the headaches, and dryness is the itchiness, and dryness is the mild constipation, and dryness also explains urinary urgency frequency and leaking. When the urinary tract is too dry, it gets constant stimulation that sends the signal to the brain, I have to urinate, I have to urinate, I have to urinate, and as soon as you moisturize your whole body, then the frequency will slow down. This Varicose veins is also dryness, also veering on the beginning of the heat. But this is the beginning of the explanation of her symptoms. As time goes on, then she will become deficient to the point of dipping into her blood. So first it's dry. We're dry. And then we have blood deficiency. And then with the blood deficiency will come heat because at some point, the pot is so dry that it starts smoking, <laughs> and that is the heat. So if we go to the next level, her heat blood deficiency is seen in her 27-day cycle and her heavy bleeding. If you have less than a 28-day cycle, you have blood deficiency and or heat. If you bleed this much, it is almost impossible for you to recoup that amount of blood in 28 days, and therefore you will become more and more blood deficient. 
This is also a chicken and egg problem because when you bleed this much, you will become blood deficient, but when you are blood deficient, you bleed more. That is explained by this. You bleed more usually by two ways. One, it's heat. So if you have something spinning and you heat it up, it will spin even faster. So the blood that comes into contact with the uterus will be more because you are circulating more and more blood. And when that speeds up, then the blood spills out of the pot, which means the blood is going to go out of you more during your cycle. So this one is a double, as a double-edged sword for the bleeding and the blood deficiency. For the blood deficiency and the hormone imbalance, I also see this melasma come about. This is really hard for me to treat. If you guys know of any wonderful way to treat it holistically, other than the bleach method that she's going through with her doctor, then I would love to know in the comment section below. Uh, varicose veins, I've also only been able to treat the pain of those, but I cannot make them go away. The cosmetic aspect, I cannot. Though my patients say it's very easy to go to the doctor and have them taken out. I don't know about that. So I have basically treated her from here up. Number two, why do people bleed too much? Is spleen deficiency. So when your spleen is too weak, spleen is responsible for holding things up and in, whether that be your baby in a miscarriage or your organs like a prolapsed stomach, rectum, or uterus. It's also for frequent urination and or loose stools. So blood going out is one thing we have to hold up and in with spleen deficiency and if you're too weak, it'll go out. For her, it's mostly the heat, but she has a little bit of that incorporated too. So next we go to, she's so deficient and dry and becoming hot that she is going to go into the next step, which is starting to drain her kidneys. The first one is her liver. Her liver and her kidneys. Liver holds the blood, kidneys hold the essence essence, gene, um, and these are a pair, like a mother and a daughter. So once the liver is out of blood, it says, mom, can I borrow some money? <laughs> and the kidney gives the essence to the liver, who turns the essence into blood and keeps spending. But she hardly ever is going to slow down enough to replenish her stores and refill the kidney. So when the kidney deficiency starts, that is the the best way I can explain that is when you look up adrenal fatigue online so that people get really depleted and tired. So they're dipping in to both sides of the yin yang. When one is so weak, it is inevitable that it doesn't start dragging the other one down with it. So the yin is depleted and then the yang starts to go down too. The yang or the qi going down will definitely explain her adrenal fatigue like kind of energy which is extremely low. And it will also explain her loose stools because the spleen deficiency is coming along, that energy to hold things up. And once you get that weak, then things start to not circulate as well. My analogy is a river. If you have a, a wide river full of the blood and the fluid, it flows a little bit better and then once you get to a certain point the trickle of fluid in the river does not flow well or it stagnates and that is the best analogy I can come up with. So if her chi or her energy isn't flowing as well because the blood deficiency and the dryness is dragging it down then she comes up with the stagnant issues like the moderate cramping and the breast tenderness and indirectly the neck pain. How do we explain the neck pain? The neck pain is associated because, my theory, because of the stagnation in her gallbladder. So liver and gallbladder are very closely related than gallbladder. When people are stressed out and weak and or blood deficiency, leads actually to the shutting down of the gallbladder too. 
then what happens is you create some kind of sludge or stones or sand and that also inhibits the ejection of bile when the gallbladder goes to squeeze and or you don't have enough bile or it doesn't squeeze well enough to eject the bile. And the bile is crucial for, ta -ta, back to the blood, it is crucial for helping you to absorb your blood because it helps you to absorb your the, the minerals from the food that contain blood building, like the iron, and it is absorbing your vitamin, your fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, K. So if it's going to help you absorb your blood building proteins and it's not working well, that's going to further exacerbate these conditions and the bile is important. It's a, it's a dual mechanism I'm learning, but the bile controls your stomach acid. And that's how we get to the neck pain because over the years I have seen a pattern, very obvious pattern, that lots of neck pain when people come in and say I have tension in neck pain, it is due to too much acid or the acid imbalance in the stomach, whether they feel the acid reflux symptoms or not because you might be having silent acid. But this is caused by the acid that comes up and irritates the nerves here. And actually recently I have been treating her and I was reminding her of a very clean diet because everybody in Hawaii loves spicy and after I treated her and she stayed away from her spicy, her neck pain went down from more like 10 to a 5 on a scale of 1 to 10. So this is how we are going to explain her symptoms. It was dryness, then blood deficiency with some heat. It started to dip into her kidney and create a little bit of chi deficiency and some stagnation. And then that's where we start her treatment, which I will be back with you in a moment to start explaining. Okay, so now we're going to talk about her treatment. And first of all, I would just like to say that these videos are really created for general knowledge versus self-treatment. I know people ask me about which herbs I use in my formulas and I'm, share, I'm glad to share those with people, but you really need to work with a Chinese medicine doctor or acupuncturist near you because every person's formula is different and it really depends on the pulse diagnosis together with your symptoms. So you're welcome to come to Hawaii and I would love to treat you. Or you can find another acupuncturist or Chinese medicine doctor near you who can help you to get started. And you can implement some of my food ideas to augment their treatments. I would like to break the treatment portion down to the food, acupuncture, ear seeds, and herbs. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, so bear with me while I find the best flow for us. If we start with the food, then as you know from my food videos, I started off with my basic food avoid list, and she's a blood type O, so I went right into advising her to eat little to no grains. And then um, because of her blood deficiency, I told her to focus on the blood building proteins versus the white meat as much as she possibly could. And I am trying to, over time, create some kind of manual or course to help you implement my dietary and lifestyle changes step by step. And once that comes out, I will put a link in the description box below. So <laughs> be patient, thank you. Next, I'll go over the needles that I used in, sometimes in rotation or not at the same time, but the first set of needles that I started off with for the bulk of her treatments through I think about the first 10 or more treatments was focusing on balancing her pulses, balancing her pulses. So I used pulses like the pericardium um, meridian with Nei Guan, and I used heart meridian, Shen Men. I used large intestine meridian, He Gu, and I used Sun Jiao meridian, Zhi Go, Lung, Kong Zui, and then on the legs, I used a lot of meridians on the, a lot of points on the kidney meridian. I usually feel along the meridians to see where there's knots, which indicates a obstruction in the flow of qi. And so she had many knots on her kidney meridian and they were very stagnant. 
That means that when I put the needle in, it's not a smooth insertion. It's like going through bubble wrap, pop, 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 with the needles. And so I fondly refer to those as puppy. <laughs> those stagnant points mean that the energy flow is so hindered that it's creating little knots, and that just tells me that the kidney is suffering the most. I also do liver points on her, like Zongfeng and Taizong, and then for her stomach, spleen, chi to strengthen her chi, I use Zhu Sanli. And I use that through a few of her cycles, her menstrual cycles, which, you know, the menstrual cycle takes at least about four weeks. And then after I had most of her symptoms stable with the pulses, then I turned her over and we started to tackle her neck and shoulder pain. The first time I did her needles, I noted that her stagnation, stagnation level was very severe, like a nine out of 10. And that means I could hardly get the needle and it was so tight. That's years to build up this kind of stagnation. Or I had another bodybuilder who was that tense and she was in so much pain that she could only move like this. So that is not easy to create that amount of stagnation in your neck and shoulders. And then after a few treatments, as her pain level decreased, the stagnation level was down to a four to five. And recently I have treated her again and there is no stagnation in her neck and shoulders. But this is several years later as I've been doing maintenance with her. So the back needles that I use are usually right along the spine on Hua Tuo Jia Ji. And then I'll come out and I'll get um, near the T4. I'll get some on the bladder meridian line one. And um, I might come out and get Jin Qing or Bing Feng. Sometimes I do on the scapula Tian Zong. That's usually what I do for the neck and shoulders. Okay, so that was her basic acupuncture treatments. Then we will go to the ear seeds. Now usually for people with headaches, I don't use the ear seeds because it tends to bring on headaches or aggravate headaches, but if she didn't have headaches, then I would have used on most of the hormonal patients, I use spleen, liver, kidney. All they hear me talk about is spleen, liver, kidney, spleen, liver, kidney. And then if you wanted you, you could put on the endocrine. So I have my little ear model to share with you today. And I also did an auricular acupuncture video devoted to a lot of these points. So I'm sure if you look at that video, you'll be able to get a more in-depth understanding of where they're located. But the kidney point is right here. And there's a little L shape or corner shape at this part of the ear. And it's right in the crook of that corner. Then if we come down, this part of the ear flattens out about here and that's the stomach. So the liver is just right outside from that. And then the spleen is just a little on the downside of that. And all of these points, as I've taught many assistants over the years, and when I teach them and I go back and check, they can be in wildly different places than I suggested. So I just wanna make sure you know it's on the inside of the ear, it is not on this outside ridge. This is your spine. So this is your neck and your thoracic and your lower back but the organ points are all located on the inside of the ear here. So kidney, liver, and spleen, and then the endocrine system or nafe on me is really easy. It's right on this little shelf here. So if you stick your finger into the flat part here, it would be right here. And this is the part that I think you could play around with the ear seats by yourself. I have some patients who take a sheet of ear seats home with them after the treatment, and they look at my videos or they get online and try to figure out where to put them because the ear seeds fall off sometimes relatively quickly depending on the oil secretion in your ear and then they can re-alcohol to dry the skin and put them on again. I always tell patients to press gently. You just need to stimulate with a little soreness. You can stimulate as many times a day as you want and then don't squeeze so hard that you break the skin because you'll have a risk of infection. We used to use plain ear seeds and then we had cute sparkly ear seeds and if you'd like to play around with these things, I'll put some links in the description box below. 
Okay, so now we can switch to talking about which herbs I used and then we'll go down her treatments and see how she improved as time went on. So you can get an idea of how long it might take for a person to improve with her set of symptoms. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll go through her some of her visits when I think she made progress and I can share with you the herbs I used along the way. Her tongue starting out was pink with a thin white coating, thicker than the perfection of thin, but still thin. And her left pulse was slightly warm. Her kidney pulse was down to 25%. So as we learned earlier, the, the kidney has been borrowed from so much that it doesn't have a chance to be replenished. But at this point, she had completed a cycle. So she was at the end of her cycle and she was about to bleed. So she had a chance to refill some of the blood and I didn't see the super deficiency signs in her pulse at that visit. Her right pulse was beautiful. And let's review left pulse is heart, liver, kidney. Right pulse is lung, spleen, large intestine. I started her off on nourishing the yin and the moisturizing because the blood building herbs are a little bit warm and I didn't want to overwhelm her with heat when she wouldn't be able to handle it. Usually the formula will taste bad to the patient too if you get started too quickly on the blood building herbs. So I started with gentle moisturizing herbs, Nu Zen Zen Han Lian Cao for the liver and kidney. And I'll note the herbs that I used in pinyin or Chinese characters in the description box below, though not every formula had all of these herbs. They changed over time. So I started with Nu Zen Zen Han Lian Cao for nourish the liver and kidney yin since that's so important and it can help to cool down some of that deficiency heat. The smoking pot, she's so hot, she's dehydrated with the heat smoking up. And then I use my Dong Tin Dong, which is really lovely for moisturizing and pretty much covers all your organs. And then I put Shan Yao in there just to protect her stomach lining. And I used Ojie, which is blood cooling stop bleeding herb because I need to slow down her flow when she does bleed as soon as possible. Then a week later at her second visit, and this is in January of 2017, the cooling moisturizing herbs helped improve her itchiness much improved. I'm better at writing numbers and percentages in my chart now, but sorry, that's all we have to go off of. The leg itchiness was much improved and she had just finished her cycle. So her tongue and pulse were showing me her true deficiency, which was a very pale tongue. Instead of being pink, it was close to white and her left pulse was extremely hot to the touch and slippery, which means she was on fire, but we are noting that this is a deficiency sort of heat as in the boiling pot. There's no blood and fluids in the pot, so it's smoking. That was the heat that she had right after her period and her right pulse was still unscathed. So at this point, now that she had a tiny bit of the cooling moisturizing herbs in her and I could see how hot she was when she lost that blood, then we went right for a really strong kidney herb, which is Bija. I usually put this on the side at the beginning because some patients have loose stools, but this is a gold standard between Bija and Guiban. These are the gold standards for um, building the kidney yin. We can't use Guiban on her though because it has circulation properties and we're going to make her bleed even more. So we start with the Bija and then I was bold and added a little bit of Hojo, which is the blood, one of the blood building herbs. And I added Taihu, which can circulate but it circulates the chi. We do not want to circulate the blood and make her bleed more, but we can circulate the chi, and it's excellent for clearing out her liver and gallbladder to help her absorb her blood building foods and herbs better. And Dangshan to just give her a little bit of energy because if I'm going to target the adrenals, I usually target building liver, kidney, yin, and blood, and I also target boosting the lung and spleen chi. It'll just build the adrenals back faster. I know a lot of supplements include ashwagandha and the dangshan is sort of in that 
category the ginseng family, but usually ashwagandha or ginseng is too hot for people with this. So the dangshan is warm, but not that hot. I also put some herbs on the side for her to take next time her cycle starts. So I added extra ojie, tebaiye, and diyu, and those are going to um, stop the bleeding without circulating. There's several categories of stopping the bleeding herbs, but we can only stick with the ones that cool the blood to stop the bleeding, or the astringent holding in the blood to stop the bleeding. We can't use the ones that circulate the blood to stop the bleeding because she's just going to bleed more. So we have to be careful which ones we pick. Then, skipping a few visits to her following cycle, on her visit number four in February, she made it to a cycle length of 30 days, which is an excellent jump from 27 to 30. That's pretty amazing. Usually people jump one or two days at a time, but if you're really strict and really good on your herbs and strict on your diet, then um, you can see such a lovely jump in cycle length extension. And then she only had two days of heavy bleeding, three pads per day. On the third day she was spotting. So now we are in our perfect four to six pads per cycle total limit and then her headaches decreased from three before and three after the cycle that were all day long to before the cycle she had one that was mild one day it was five to six out of ten before her period and after her period she only had one that was also five to six out of ten level pain her bowel movement is beautiful and formed and her energy improved to ranging between a 5 to an 8 out of 10, which is much better than a 3 to a 5, and she felt much more clear-headed. I have a lot of patients who report the improvement in their energy and the clearing of the brain fog, and they just feel more alert, and hopefully these positive changes can encourage people, if they can remember them and grab onto them, they can encourage people to continue maintaining their diet and lifestyle changes even after their symptoms are stable because it's hard to remember the headaches or the itchiness or different pains you have because once they're gone, you tend to forget about them. So you gotta focus on the positive benefits that you get unless you go too far off diet and those symptoms start to come back. That's a nice gentle reminder to get back on your clean diet and lifestyle. She also brought to me um, her lab tests, her T, total T3 was 73 out of this lab's normal range of 80 to 100. And usually when the thyroid is out of range, it's because they've been in the blood deficiency and or adrenal fatigue so long that the heat has come and it's burning off. It's burning the thyroid. So she brought that to me to show me that. And at that time, her tongue made it through a cycle without becoming pale. She did not become all hot and slippery to the touch on her left pulse, but her kidney was at 25%. So it's still an improvement over hot and slippery. I will take warm with weak kidney any day. And then her right pulse was lung spleen, lung and large intestine were down to 25% and that was three days after the start of her cycle, so maybe between the loose tools or not enough vegetables, she was somehow a little bit dehydrated. At that point, I added a little bit of dangue, which is a blood building herb that has to circulate the blood qualities. But didn't I just say you can't circulate the blood? If you use dangue, which has very mild circulation properties, and you balance it with ojie, at least in a one-to-one -one ratio, then it doesn't usually affect the bleeding or the length of the cycle. But I usually don't use anything stronger than dangue, like I wouldn't use bisal because I think that circulation property is too strong, even to be balanced by other herbs. Though everybody might have their own opinion, that's fine. And then on her next cycle, which was visit number eight in March of 2017, she had a 29 day cycle, which is still amazing, with a total of six pads, and this time she only had two days of headaches, but instead of lasting the whole day, they only lasted 30 minutes, and they were still five out of 10 pain level. So I thought that was a significant improvement. And remember, 
one cycle, 28 days, 29 or 20, 30 days of her cycle, is sort of like one day. It needs a lot of patience to treat hormonal imbalances because unlike the circadian rhythm, which is every day you sleep, you wake up, you sleep, you wake up, or even the bowel movement, usually you eat something and then it comes out of you in the next two or three days, then that's more of an immediate response, but the hormones, you have to wait until the cycle so that we can see the improvement. So I'm skipping over a few treatments in between, but basically the point of all those treatments is to keep her pulses as perfect as I possibly can until she gets to the next cycle so that we can see the improvement. And that was a lovely cycle with her tongue still maintaining its pinkness. She still had that little bit thicker than normal white coating and her pulses were pretty good. Her kidney made it to 50% uh, instead of 25% at, after this cycle. And then her, um, again, her digestive system was a little dry, but I noted that she had a little bit of food poisoning before this appointment, so it might have just been the loose stools causing the dryness in her digestive system. At her following cycle, we came up with another 30-day cycle. She had seven pads, only one mild headache behind the eyes, and we were pretty um, we were stable in her cycle and the PMS symptoms associated with that, so we started to switch our focus onto her melasma, which I haven't had tons of success with treating, and we tried to focus on her tongue coating to get to kill the candida. So what we did was we told her absolutely no sugar and no fruits except for a little bit of berries and to be extremely clean on her paleo diet basically paleo diet plus the christine avoids so we also helped support her with herbs we added um sandi shen sen zi cao and huang lian huang qing huang bo the three yellows and zhi zi which will moisturize, cool the blood, and they're very bitter and kill many things other than just candida. So at that time we also turned her face down and I turned my attention to the neck pain because she sometimes had up to a 9 or 10 pain level in her neck. I did the points along her spine and they were very stagnant. So we started her on her new diet and her herbs to kill the candida and then she came back a couple weeks later and told me about her exciting candida healing crisis. So yes indeed she did have it because after about four days of her diet she had full-on candida die-off symptoms, the flu symptoms, nausea, upset stomach, fevers, chills, cough, and phlegm for a whole week. When I saw her at that two weeks later appointment, she was still a little nauseous and even her sleep was disturbed by the upset stomach. She didn't eat very much and on the positive side, her neck was really good. I already saw that her tongue coating was becoming much thinner, which was exciting for me to see and she's definitely by far the most extreme candida die-off case that I've seen. What I usually see is people break out with a little rash on their chest or maybe on the elbows and the knees. But because of that, I do a more gentle candida cleanse now where we take them from sugar to fruit and then from high glycemic index fruits to low. And that can mitigate any of those extreme uncomfortable die-off symptoms. And her pulses were still lovely for the most part. And then her back needle stagnation was also greatly down and her pain was mostly under control. So even though we tried the candida diet, it didn't really help her melasma, but I'm sure that killing the candida was important for maintaining all of her other symptoms. And then after a while, I would space her 
visits out to usually I see people monthly for maintenance because after you get away from me too long you start to forget just like the dentist tells you to brush your teeth in those little circular motions you forget that Christina says don't eat this 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 eat that 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 and it's just a gentle reminder when your pulses get too far from perfection then I need to guide you gently back onto the right path so if she got too far off diet, her headaches would come back, itchiness and the urination issues, and that basically helped keep her on her diet for the most part. And we weaned her off her herbs, and then everything stayed basically stable, stable her cycles and her symptoms and her bowel movement. And then um, her bowel movement up almost daily, and then her neck pain tended to come and go, I have seen her recently, that was 2017, and we fast forward to today, and her neck pain was um, getting up there on the pain scale again at a 9 out of 10, and so we had to revisit the diet one more time, and we encouraged her to really be good and stop all her spicy, because many people here in the Hawaiian Islands are highly addicted to spicy. So after I did the needles, which were not that stagnant, by the way, we cleared that in 2017. So I was even more convinced it had something to do with the stomach acid. And her pain level went down to a five, and then it flared only when she ate spicy. And as soon as she cut the spice out, the pain level went down. And so now we're working to get her stomach healed so that her pain level in her neck goes back down to good again. And then I do remember something very interesting with her. She was good for at least a year or a year and a half. And when she came to one of those follow-up appointments, she had gone off diet for some kind of celebrations or holidays. And it had been almost a whole month that she had been being completely off diet. And I said, oh. So I checked her pulses, waiting to see what the results would be. And the only pulse that was really down was her spleen stomach pulse. So I could tell either she was eating too much spicy vinegar or carbohydrates. And she said probably all of the above. So I said, okay, so if you stay off diet too long, then some of your symptoms will come back. And they did end up coming back, but she, she said at her following appointment, it was about a month time. So I have seen these kind of scenarios where people go on vacation for a week or two and they just eat whatever, like in Italy, they're gonna eat pasta and cheese and tomato, all the things that they don't like, but maybe their skin condition doesn't flare. I'm thinking of one lady and she comes back and even though her pulses were a little bit bad, it wasn't bad long enough for her to get all the symptoms back. So it is nice for people who do heal their gut in the long term, you can still have fun occasionally and you don't have to be 100% strict like a saint forever but for the most part you need to stay on track or the symptoms will usually come back or you'll get new ones. So that was sort of her overall treatment progression and it took us a few cycles to get her um, bleeding and headaches under control and the rest of her dry symptoms and her pain but overall um, she was a, a lovely patient to work with and super sweet and so I will continue doing these episodes and try to make them smoother and smoother and then I have the next one maybe lined up I will do an acid reflux episode and then if you'd like to subscribe to the channel when I post a new video I think they might email you or send you some kind of alert that that one has come out and I will really try after I get the pattern down to do them on a regular basis. If you would like your case to be up for analysis, then I will have you fill out the questions part of our registration forms and without putting your contact information, I'd like to maintain as much HIPAA compliance as possible so that you can email me the symptoms and I can just use you as a Jane Doe, a female age something, blood type something, and then I will analyze the symptoms and base it on the patients that I've treated that have your similar set of symptoms. And then if you would like to do that, I will put notes in the description box below to set up that for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, aloha.